Hello and welcome to another Demis Helen tutorial. We are going to do a full track walkthrough and we're going to take a look at uh, my new track in its entirety. It hasn't been named yet, uh, but it's going to be something that is going to be released with the other tracks I'm working on. So uh, what we have is a complete track split into leads, basses, pads, percussion, and then a kick on its own and then effects. So let's take a look through. So the let's go through the starting point of this track uh, and we'll listen to some of the sections. So the starting point of the track was this section, which I'm trying to create some classic sounding things uh, from the classic days of trance. And I thought that style of melody that just kind of hard hits seems to signify very early trance. Uh, and the the actual preset I've made sound a little bit more old school rather than really clean and tidy. And that's where it all began. It started there. I started to develop a melody. It didn't work too well. And then I came up with the main arp. So we'll just let you listen to this bit from this point and you'll hear the main arp come in. So as you can see, the track was born from this melody and it's taken from this preset and layered up with my massive pluck stars, slightly tweaked to make it sound bright and uh, airy. So that is where the track was born and they were layered up. I'll walk through the mixer in a little bit and we'll look at all the uh, inserts and things that I've done to get these sounds. And then obviously we jump down from that whole section into a secondary melody which plays slightly different. No, sir. I do not so now we've got a, me a melody that's doing the same thing as the arpeggio from before but it's actually just rising up in a different pattern and then the change occurs back to that melody here here comes the transition And then what I do is I build it straight into the track, like classic trance used to be, just a snare and some crashes straight into it. Then that's coupled with a top melody, which is this. Obviously, all the way through, we have this beautiful acid lead, just constantly playing through, playing the same arpeggio uh, notation. And then we have our key change back to the original uh, intro here. I do not follow. And then from there, it all builds out into the bare bones. Okay, so that is the that's the structure of the song. 
uh, and we've just looked at the lead section there. Uh, I'll go through the process in a short while. And then on the bases, we have three bases. Now, uh, four bases, should we say. The No, we do. We do have three. That is the folder track. I did have four, and I did move it down here. Yeah, there, here it is. It's a helm pad uh, base preset, and it just did fit with the track, so it got extradited. So uh, we have... The ones that I've called free base are the ones made with free synths. So if we go into this one, we have Helm playing this sound. She's just like a mid to top bass. Then we have a sub bass, which is coming from uh, Spire, I think. And then we have this free bass. So uh, we have Tal Uno LX playing this one. And I've made a very modern sounding preset off there. So I did do a video on this before. So you can head over on screen to that video of creating a bass. And then um, all layered together give you this. So very simple. Let the synth do the work. So as soon as you put that synthesizer section in. It doesn't matter how simple the bass uh, section is. So I haven't worked too much on the basses. I've just made them so they they fit nicely together. And we'll have a look at that in a second as well. The pads. We just have a pad preset that I built that just hits and fades. And that comes from Hive. And then we have a dull pad, which I call dull. It's not as bright as the other one. And they just work together. Also come with copious amount of processing. Then the percussion is the next section. So this is using a variety of loops. So shamefully just use them as they came. Uh, just edit them to sound lovely. So you can see Vengeance uh, House, or whatever it's called, number two and one. And you get a nice uh, a nice feel from that. And finally, let's just get down to here. We do have the percussion section here, which give you your crashes. And your snare. And the kick. And there we have it. So the whole hat section and claps are all coming from loops. I haven't uh, put anything else in. I wanted to get that uh, weaker feeling from the classic trance. Uh, everything's a little bit weaker and not as uh, honed in and precise, which I think what really defined that era of trance, uh, not over processing things too much and making it sound really clean and just noisy. So uh, that is the percussion, and then we have the kick. We have effects, and it's just down sweeps, uh, a couple of reverse sweeps, and a couple of vocal effects from Splice. And then I have this uh, vocal movie section, which uh, just says, I do not follow. Uh, basically, I set the trends. So I'd like to think so. I do not follow. Okay, so that covers everything to do with the layout and what's in the track. And as you can see, all nightly... Uh, neatly packed away into its uh, folders. So let's have a look at the mixer. So let's just get off screen. Here we are. It's full screen for you. So we have a variety of things going on here. Uh, we do go into these folders here like we have on screen before. So we have percussion based leads, pads and percussion. If I said that already, uh, we have a reverb effects channel as well for a send. And you can see that I've sent it to a few different tracks here. Uh, let's start with the leads. So we have all the leads here. So I'll just solo the lead section, which will just give you these two main arps. So I've only sent the two arps to the leads uh, group. The rest I went to process independently. I didn't want them all going through the same processing for obvious reasons. So this is the blended version of the two synths. Uh, it would help if we have a section with them in, so which is this bit. We'll have them fading in across those two bars. OK, 
Okay, so nice and bright. Not much base information on there. So we have some processing on the channel itself. And we have two lots of processing here. And that's where we started. So we're going to focus on the first synth. I'll just quickly walk through what I've done to process here. So first things first, EQ. Place it where I wanted it to be, how much information I wanted to come through. And that's really what I wanted to hear in the track. Then a bit of delay. So I've used the ping pong on uh, quarter notes and then I've just put a bit of low filter on there and increased the space of the ping pong. Gives a very nice effect on top of that. Then we have, uh, let's just go on here. I've used the Cubase built-in reverb. Sorry, they keep appearing on my second screen here. So just to add a little bit of depth to the track. as well as the send reverb, as you can see. So I've just cut the bass out of this reverb just to give it a little bit more of a presence and a space in the track. Uh, then that is followed by uh, some stereo placement. So if we turn this on, I've sent more of the detail to the sides and you can see the punch, the highs are more towards the sides and then the lows more to the centre to kind of keep it a bit centralised but give it a bit of space at the same time. And then we've added a bit of Molot, which is just a bit of compression, just gentle compression here with a bit of uh, quite a high boost on the makeup gain. So that just helps everything come through and sound really clean. Just boosts all the background detail. Bit of side chain. Just from kickstart, so nothing special there. And then we go through OTT. So as you can see, um, I've kept it roughly as it comes out uh, when you first load it. I've just um, increased the downwards and the upwards here. So decreased and increased reduced some of the bases out and just dropped the overall level of the base and just left it at that. So that's where the character comes from. However, that needed controlling, which is then controlled here on this um, group channel. So we'll look at that in a second once we've looked through the second synth. So the second synth is coming from Massive. First things first. Bit of a tidy up, get rid of all that low detail that's rumbling away. Don't know all that conflicting with the bass line. Okay, so that's it, just a roll off just to position it in the track. And that adds a little bit more low detail on the side of this one. It adds that lower mid detail back in. And then we've put OTT again on here. You've got to be very careful not to overuse OTT, um, but I've balanced it well using the final track. So as you can see, again, the same, bit of upwards, bit of downwards, and then I've increased the mids and lowered the lows. So overall, together, they sound really good, but they've got a lot of top end on, and as soon as you start adding the pads and the hats and everything else in, it just starts to fall apart and make your ears bleed. So in order to combat that, we go to the inserts for the group channel for these two. And as you can see, I have put a pretty much a brick wall. It's not close. It's close to a brick wall, uh, but quite a big uh, drop off on the highs up to 12,000 hertz there. Bit of a bass roll off because there's a bit of bass information still coming through. And then just... Uh, a bit of a reduction on overall highs here with just a bit of a shelf. So prior to this, so it does sound good, being really, really crystal clear. Uh, but I'm actually controlling it back here to rein it back uh, to stop your ears from bleeding. And then to finally give it its entire character, 
I have put Molot on again, and we've got the Sigma switch on this time. Uh, very slow attack, missing out some of the, most of the low here from 150 hertz. Quick release, a 3 to 1 ratio, and then I've just increased the threshold till it sounds nice and gives a bit of gain, gain reduction. Uh, and then just increase the makeup gain there. So just listen to the difference this makes. It returns some of that high detail. So it's just increasing its presence in the track, but just so slightly to bring it under control. And then when you put it in with the rest of the track, just simply take away that processing on that track. Sounds a little bit too top heavy. And now it sounds like it's got a place. It sits nicely within the track. So that is covering the synths for the main arps. Then we do have the synth here. And it's just a case of a bit of kickstart for side chaining. Uh, and then I've used a bit of Molot again with the Sigma switch to increase some of the transient detail. And then just tidied it up with a little bit of EQ. And that's it. Nothing else done to that one. And then finally we have the top melody. Uh, which just has a bit of kickstart, no, it doesn't, just has a little bit of EQ just to bring it under control and I've removed some of these awful frequencies that were resonating through, um, which is for this synth here. <laughs> Okay, and then just a bit of reverb, and don't forget I also put a bit of reverb on top of the main art for the first one, even though there was a bit there. And there we are. That is everything to do with that, and then we do have the acid lead here. Quite a bit of process has gone into that as well, so... Okay, so apart from the send reverb, we've gone through uh, Pro Q3, obviously just to tidy it up and remove some of the mid detail there. Le Petit Excite, just to excite the highs, just to give it a nice twinkly feel. Bit of side chaining, again, ping pong delay, uh, set to eighth notes here. And then finally, a bit of compression, just to keep it under control, really. Nothing too grand. Okay, so moving on to the bases. It's just... Uh, what are we doing here? Why can't I unsolo everything? Okay, well, there we go. Uh, so moving on to the basis. The processing that's gone on here is quite simple. So we have this section kickstart, obviously, and then just a bit of shaping to give it its presence. So without that on, quite a lot of resonance going on here at this section. I just didn't want that in the mix at all, so I remove that and turn it into a mid bass. We have the sub bass, just Kickstarter. There is no processing whatsoever on the individual track. Just wait to keep it raw. And then we have our Taluno LX bass, and I've just controlled this down with a little bit of um, what's this called again? Fat Maker to uh, just obviously give it a bit of grit. And that is about it, really. And then the only processing that happens is Molot, and then we have some Pro-Q3 to tidy up. So let's just have a look at these two. Okay, so what we've done here is we've just used the mid-scoop to add a bit of mid-detail. Uh, we've used the Sigma switch to add some more transient detail. 3 to 1 ratio, now we've just brought the threshold up to taste to obviously keep it balanced. Oh. And as you can see, I've kept it on hard knee there and just brought the limiter up just to keep it under control. So before, 
there's not as much bite on the transient at the start. And that gives you your detail. And this is the cutoff for the kick drum. So when the kick drum is actually operating, you can see where it's coming through and where the frequencies clash the most, but the kick drum is actually sat here. And then I've just brought some of the bass detail back in at the bottom there with that. And that is it. That is the only processing that's gone into it. It may tweak a little bit more when I listen to this track in full again, but nothing too drastic. Okay, so that covers the bass. Let's have a look at the pads. So the pads are here. And we need to... Let's just keep this in place. I keep moving this. I'm not used to having the mixer on the same screen, you see. Uh, let's go to the pads. Okay, so first things first, we have some reverb, obviously, from the send. And then you can see that I've just put a bit of downwards compression on there. Just boost the mids just a tad and reduce the output just to give it that bite so before we had this OTT was added then we have some EQ remove the lows and then boost some of the side details here in the upper mids And then finally, a little bit of compression. It's just on the classic setting, a bit of a slow uh, attack, really slow release. And then I've just pushed up the side detail here, as you can see, left for mids, right for side detail, and the same with the dry signal. That should have been there, I must have moved it. Okay. And that goes through to the pad channel here, which has got a little bit more processing, but we'll have a look at that after this one. So this one... Okay, so this is how it came. So a bit of EQ to tidy it up. And there was a really resonant frequency in this section, I think. Let's just listen. So this is a classic example. I had another pad sound in here and I never actually adjusted the EQ. So this is actually doing uh, pretty much nothing. It was to get a resonant frequency out and now we have it up here. So I want to keep some of that detail in, but with it being a bit thinner, I'm just going to aim to keep just those lower ones as close to the plus three mark here. It just pushes a little bit higher. Anyway, I'll look at that later. But so you can see I'm just doing a bit of control. It's a bit loose at the moment. Uh, and then a bit of a boost on the highs there. And then just to give it a bit of grit um, and more presence with the other, a bit of sausage fatner. So, yep, yeah, there you go. He's got his tongue out. He's happy. And then together. So the thinner one is taking over as the, uh, the bright one fades out. And then it goes through to the pad section over here. Kickstarter, obviously, for side chaining. And then Pro Q3 just to tame the highs and remove some extra bass detail. It's always good practice just to have a roll off. So in the track, I didn't feel it needed any compression to keep it under control. It sounded okay at the volume level I'd set it at. And yeah, that is uh, everything for the pads. And finally, let's cover the next big topic, which is the percussion. So we have three loops. And we need to also get to a section with all the loops playing. So we'll go here. Okay, so the first one. Second. Okay, and the third one all together. Balance the volumes. 
bit of auto pan on this one just to give it a bit of space on either side. Uh, but no processing at all on the individual tracks because these samples are made to such a high quality that they are designed to just dra drag and drop. Uh, you could argue I could remove a little bit of low detail with them just to tidy them up a bit. And I probably will, but it has gone through to the percussion here. And as you can see, I've removed the low detail. Taken away some of the highs just to get rid of that really tinny area that hurts your ears and makes them bleed and then a bit of a uh, high shelf on the side detail just to give it a bit more presence so without this detail on a bit too much low detail nice and tight and then just a little bit of reverb to just give it a little bit of space in the mix as well just to help fill up the ether of the track and then finally we have the kick drum and how the kick drum has been processed uh, if we turn the percussion off is we've thrown it through Pro C2 and as you can see um, we've got it on the punch setting relatively low threshold here close to the hard knee as well for instant reaction uh, a 3 to 1 ratio, slow attack to let the uh, transient snap through, and then a really quick shut of the release. Sounds good. Just reduce the volume a bit to obviously control the output. So before, just, just helps keep it from clipping over, because like if you look at the volume level, it just dominates the whole track as soon as you take that off. That just brings the level down, but just gives it a little bit more. It, it reduces the dynamic of it, but it gives it a little bit more punch. And then finally, we have an EQ on here, but I never actually did anything with it. So there you go. Happy with the kick drum. And that was made in Kick 2 as well, uh, specifically for the track. Uh, and that is everything. We've got the effects and the... Uh, the voice, I've just removed the low end on the voice and put a bit of delay and threaded some of that reverb in. Would you care to join my following? No, sir. I do not follow. Bit of ping pong delay on there. And then the effects, processed as usual, remove the low end, a little bit of compression just to control the volume levels as they're rising. And there is a vocal effect in there as well. And it just it adds a nice little touch into the track. And that is everything. So um, if you did enjoy the video, drop me a like. If you have any questions, let me know in the description, uh, in the description, in the comments. Uh, I'll be worried if you can edit my description. Uh, so let me know in the comments and if there's anything that I've missed or not covered or you're not understanding something just let me know and uh, I'll see if I can get it covered in the comments for you and finally subscribe I have uh, two videos per week minimum uh, and hit the bell icon so you can see when I first upload so you get first dibs on the comments so thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week